So when I was a young man, I remember I spent a day with uh, the strangest kid. So we were the only two children that were uh, at this big social get together. So, you know, we were stuck with each other the entire day. It started off friendly enough, a little Nintendo, some Double Dragon, and then he got bored. And some kids, when they get bored, their mind just goes straight to mischief. Other people like myself might go get a sandwich or play a game or go outside, but some people want to start a fire. Now, starting a fire is not what he did that day. I'm sure he did eventually. He was a psychopath. Um, I knew plenty of children who did start fires. No, what he did was he went downstairs and first he tried to peer pressure me into eating some caviar, which I wouldn't do. And then he started drinking what was left over in people's beer cans. And he was trying to give me some. What he didn't know was my grandfather had already given me a taste of beer and I thought it was putrid. So, firm no. I've never really been a fan of peer pressure anyway. Then he says, hey, come out front. So we go outside, and he jumps in his mom's truck. I think it was an SUV. Yeah, I think it was a big SUV. So he gets in, and I get in the passenger seat thinking we're just chilling in this SUV. Then he pulls out his mom's keys. And I was like, where'd you get those? And he's like, oh, I stole them from my mom's purse. I wanna say we're like nine. So we're definitely old enough to know better. And I've never been one of those crazy people. Like I never stole my mom's car and went out in the middle of the night or anything because she would have taken one of my legs. I know this. So I'm sitting there as he's like got the key in the ignition and I'm like, hey, unlock my door. I want to get out because he's like now putting the car in reverse and we're going down the driveway and very slow. Like, I don't know if he was in reverse or if he put it in neutral, but we started to roll backwards. I remember that. And I was like, I can't be here when you get caught because my grandfather will kill me. My grandfather and his mom come outside and, I mean, fortunately, I wasn't in the driver's seat, but I could tell that my grandfather was not pleased and, fortunately for me, I have, I guess, I had his trust. So, he's mad, he sees me, I see him mad, immediately I'm like, look, I know what it looks like. I had nothing to do with this. Please don't think I'm crazy, too. My grandpa kind of, like, shrugs that off, and he's like, okay, all right, I believe you. You guys uh, go inside, go play in the basement. So, little heterosexual boys play a lot of gay games. I think this is why a lot of straight men get so mad when somebody finally comes out of the closet because we want to know that up front. Don't, don't tell me 25 years later that you're gay. I did a lot of things with you. I wouldn't have jacked you off if I knew you were gay. Not like we actually jack men off, but some guys do some really gay shit. My friends and I, I think as gay as it got was like ball taps, but we would also do this little thing where if I was sitting like, I, let's say I was driving and my friend Nelson's in the car, I would put my hand on his thigh and when we were very young, like when we were 16, I would put my hand on the thigh and he would smack it away real fast. And I'd be like, oh, what's wrong, man? Don't be a homophobe. By the time we were about 30, it had turned into one of us puts a, their hand on the other person's thigh and then the other person just lets it stay there forever. And then eventually the person who first put their hand there has to move their hand because it's gotten too gay for them. And, uh, yeah, so you can see it's, it's pretty, it's gay even describing that, but, um, the, the games that we play. So me and this kid going back to Chicago, me and this kid are in the basement and I forget what we were doing. Like at first we were just playing and then all of a sudden his dick is out. 
Uh, I know a lot of other kids played this. I never played it, but show me mine. Or wait, I'll show you mine. You show me yours. Some people did that. And if I was going to do it, it would have been with a girl. So there he is with his dick out. And now he's trying to, he, he won't put the dick away. And he's trying to tell me to take mine out. I think he had forgotten the whole caviar scenario. Because peer pressure will never defeat me. It's not my kryptonite. So his dick is out. We're arguing because I refuse and I'd really love him to put his dick away. But he won't because he's like, no, now you've seen mine and I want to see yours. And I was like, why do you want to see mine? I don't want to show it to you. My grandfather comes down while the kid's dick is out. When my grandfather caught us, the kid finally put his dick away um, immediately. And it's weird to have to explain and ask for trust twice in a day because immediately as the kid is putting his dick away and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, mister. I'm not going to tell you my grandfather's last name. Um, and I am like, grandpa, I didn't ask to see that and I wasn't going to show him mine. And my grandpa was like, I believe you. I think it's time for your friend to go. And I was like, that's fair. Now, he wasn't my friend. Uh, his mother was a friend of somebody who knew my grandpa. So that was the end of them. I never saw that kid again. It was a weird afternoon, but I really wish my grandfather was alive. Uh, I don't think I don't think he would have remembered because it was a long time ago. I don't think we ever discussed it um, while I was grown and before he died, but I would have loved to have known what was going through his mind when he walked down and saw this kid's dick out and he's probably like, oh my God, don't be gay. Hey man, you ever uh, get concerned about like your wife looking in your ass? Excuse me? No, I just mean like, okay, so I don't want to be like super gross about it. Um, Okay, so let's let's just pretend that I'm talking about my face, right? Like I don't like to turn uh with my my mouth directly facing my wife because like okay, if you're looking at directly at my face, my cheeks are pretty smooth, right? Like I don't I don't grow a lot of facial hair. But if I were to open my mouth, it's like my teeth are made of hair and I'm concerned that she'll see it and n never be able to shake the image you know like every now and again I catch some toilet paper ball in there or something and I don't know what she could see uh, maybe I need to comb it or something no I don't ever have thoughts like that okay so Let's uh let's talk about Netflix's top ten. Uh, it sucks, pretty much every day, since its inception, and it's just weird to me. I'm not mad at Netflix. More so, it just makes me think: Are there only like ten year old girls watching Netflix across the world? Because it's the top ten in the world, made of damn near half a billion people. And this is the top 10 at the time that I'm speaking. Uh, Thunder Force, which is a movie with Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer, who, big fan of Octavia Spencer. It's also got Jason Bateman, huge fan of him, and Bobby Cannaval, huge fan of him as well. I loved Melissa McCarthy in Bridesmaids, but she has let me down far too many times I feel like somebody who reached into a hole to get bit or a better better analogy I feel like somebody who went to a glory hole and every time that I put my penis in, like the first time I got an amazing blowjob from a beautiful woman and then every time after that I put my penis in the hole and I felt teeth and immediately pulled it out and so, Every time that there is a new Melissa McCarthy movie, 
I just feel like it's a glory hole that's going to bite me on the penis. Um, then there's Two Distant Strangers, which is a movie with Joey Badass, who is a rapper that's okay. And no. Oh, by the way, I do want to say one more thing about this Thunder Force movie. Uh, my wife and I were going through Netflix yesterday, and she saw that. She loves Melissa McCarthy. She saw that, and uh, we didn't even watch the trailer. She goes, ooh, uh, do you want to see that? And I immediately, I didn't even need to think about it. Hadn't heard about the movie before the moment that we both saw that. And I was like, no, not at all. And she's like, oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll just put it in my list for later then. Um, okay, top 10. What Lies Below, which she watched and said was horrible. Uh, Concrete Cowboy. What? Saving Private Ryan. Okay, Saving Private Ryan is a wonderful movie. Legally Blonde. Again, is it just 10-year-old girls? And I know Legally Blonde is old, and Reese Witherspoon is a national treasure. Um, I have refused to watch that movie since I was a child. I'll, I'll die never having seen Legally Blonde. Um, then there's Sniper, Ghost Shooter. Uh, the Little Rascals, which I, I remember that, and that was pretty bad, but yeah. Uh, Friends with Benefits, ugh. Accepted, ugh. And I like Justin Long, but no. Waterworld, I'll be honest, I never saw it. Everybody keeps trying to say it's not as bad as everybody said it was in the 90s, but... Mm. And then The Last Kids on Earth, Happy Apocalypse to You. Like, none of those movies, only one of them would I want to see, and I've already seen it, Saving Private Ryan. Why the fuck is everybody watching this? Have they run out of good things to watch? I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I was thinking about it. Every time that I go to Netflix, which is not often these days, because I think I default to HBO Max uh, or YouTube, and then Hulu, if I want to watch a show... Um, I'll be honest, I watch more Discovery Plus than I'd like to admit. And, um, then Disney Plus on Fridays. Yeah. You let me know, though. Am I the only one who thinks that it sucks? I can't be. Well, then you're a bunch of adults who are listening to this. It's been a really long time since I sat down and listened, uh, to this song. But I feel like if it's been a minute... Let's just go back and examine the lyrics to this classic from the 90s. Um, I think it needs no introduction. I'm going to read it. I'm, I'm not going to try to rap it. Here we go. All you ladies pop your pussy like this. Shake your booty. Don't stop. Don't miss. All you ladies pop your pussy like this. Shake your booty. Don't stop. Don't miss. Just do it. Do it. Do it, do it, do it now, lick it good, suck this pussy just like you should, right now, lick it good, suck this pussy just like you should, my neck, my back, lick my pussy and my crack, my neck, my back, lick my pussy and my crack, my neck, my back, lick my pussy and my crack, my neck, my back, lick my pussy and my crack. First, you gotta put your neck into it. Don't stop, just do it. Do it, then. <laughs> then you roll your tongue from the crack back to the front. Then you suck it. Oh my. Then you suck it all till I shake and come. N word. Make sure I keep bussin' nuts. N word. All over your face and stuff. Mm. Slow head, show me so much love. The best head comes from a thug. The dick good, thick, big, and long. Slow thumping till the crack of dawn. On the X, make faces and stuff. Through the night, make it so much love. Dead sleep when the sun comes up. So lick it now, lick it good. Lick this pussy just like you should. Come on, right now, lick it good. Lick this pussy just like you should, my neck. 
on my back, lick my pussy and my crack, my neck, my back, lick my pussy and my crack. Verse 2, you might roll dubs, you might have G's, but fuck that, N-word, get on your knees. A bitch like me moans and screams, thug misses. Know what I mean? At the club, so fresh, so clean. Hoes hate and N-words watching me, so high in the line on green. With a unit on my face, so mean, I got to pick which N-word I need. To suck and fuck, gon' satisfy me. You try me, I'll make you see. You bitches ain't got shit on me, so lick it now. Lick it good. Lick this pussy just like you should. Come on, right now. Lick it good. Lick this pussy just like you should. My neck on my back. Lick my pussy and my crack. My neck, my back. Lick my pussy and my crack. And then it just kind of goes on like that for a while. Um, and I do want to come back to this very explicit uh, part that repeats towards the end here. Then you roll your tongue from the crack back to the front. Then you suck. <laughs> I got to read this because I don't want to mess up. Then you suck it all till I shake and come. N-word. Make sure I keep busting nuts. N-word. Then you roll your tongue from the crack back to the front. Then you suck it all till I shake and come. N-word. Make sure I keep busting nuts. N-word. Lastly, my neck, my back, lick my pussy and my crack. Repeat that to yourselves a few more times. That song came out in the 90s. It's weird. Um, when I hear people and their accent doesn't match their face, I still get confused like it was my first time. Like uh, last week... There was something on television, and an Asian dude had the best British accent anyone's ever heard in their lives, and it blew me away. Like, when my wife came upon me watching this guy, uh, she thought perhaps I was witnessing a miracle, because I was just enamored with what I was seeing. I was like, it can't be, or can it? And um, I, I understand that that is, I guess, racism? It's something. Um, because it just, it never fails. Like, if I see, I'm trying to think of the first time that I met an African, like, clearly African, but I wasn't aware of what had happened throughout Europe and Africa and all, and apartheid and this and that. So I didn't know that there are Africans who have accents from everywhere that basically they've been taken. Um, so when I met this dude who was so clearly Nigerian, and he was a really great guy. I can't remember his name at all. But uh, he was he was like Jeffrey from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Um, who also had like a, a bit of a European accent, which seemed odd, but it was like that. And I was just like, dude, are you, where are you from? I was like, they had that accent in Africa? And he was like, oh no, uh, my wife and I, we grew up in England. And I was like, what the fuck were Africans doing in England? And yeah, so he had to educate me a little bit because I was just blown away. And not even in a bad way, it's kind of like when I tell anybody white, that I was born in North Dakota, I watch their questions, <laughs> I watch their face get filled with questions, but they never just ask like, how did uh, black people find out about North Dakota? It's always just, oh, I see North Dakota. But I get that it's not like them trying to be a jerk or anything. So, I, I don't jump down my throat about it. Um, and you know, the same goes for, uh, I think the first time that I saw a brown person with a, uh, an English accent, I was like, oh my God, what happened? 
that you suddenly speak like, because in my mind, and it's definitely not the greatest thing to say out loud, but in my mind, the English accent is reserved for white people. I don't think that I knew that black people were in England outside of a vacation until uh, the movie Lock, Stock, and Smoking Barrels. Because I was like, oh, this movie's awesome. And he even went out of his way to put black people in it. And I think it was a friend. I was like, dude, black people live in England. I was like, what? Since when? They were never in Mary Poppins or any of the other Disney films from before I was born. So the whole thing really just, you know, throws 